In this video, I'll be showing you how to find the lateral area of a right cone. So just a brief review, lateral versus surface area. Lateral area is going to be the sides of our figure, where surface area is the sides plus the base or bases. And in the case of a cone, we do have a singular circular base, but we are not going to be taking that into consideration in this problem because we're going to be finding its lateral area only. So sometimes I take a common sense approach with the cone that's a little bit harder. I usually do just jump to the formula when I work on a cone problem. So in this case, I'm going to start by jotting down the formula for lateral area of a cone. Our lateral area formula is pi rl. So let's have a conversation about what we are given and what we already know in this problem. So to begin with, our problem gives us a height of 10.2. So that's going to be the dimension right here, the true height of our cone. The radius is 4. I'll fill that in right here. And for the purposes of our formula, it's important that we understand what L stands for. L stands for the slant height. So I'll be very careful to show you the difference between height and slant height. So in our given information, our height is 10.2. I sometimes call that the true height. Our slant height is going to be this dimension over here. That is our slant height. And in this problem, that's going to be what the L stands for. And we don't know that piece of information. So this problem is going to require a little bit of side work before we're ready to just plug into our formula. So in order to find the slant height, I'm going to have to recognize that I have a right triangle here. If we were to sort of pull that aside from some of our earlier learning, we know that, and this is an L, not a 1. I don't really love that variable for that reason, but that's what we've got to work with in our formula here. We have to recognize that in a right triangle, when we know two sides, we can find the missing third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to be applying a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So our two short leg pieces here and our hypotenuse, our longest piece here. So we could write this as 10.2 squared plus 4 squared equals L squared. And then we just have a little bit of work to do. So I'll square 10.2. That gives me, whoops, when I actually square it, I get 104.04. When I square 4, 4 times 4 is 16. So 104.04 plus 16 gives us 120.04. So that's our L squared value. So we should know from some earlier learning that in order to undo that square, we can simply take a square root of both sides. So I need to take the square root of 120.04. And I'm taking my calculator out to do that work. That's going to return an answer of 10.95627. And that keeps on going a little bit. And that would be our value for L, which is our slant height. So back over to our blue part of our problem. I could now set up my lateral area as pi times radius, which is the 4 that was provided. And then I need to place my slant height in this spot. So the 10.95627 number. And notice that I'm not rounding that number off right now. That's a big mistake that students sometimes make. So I've kept this big, long, messy decimal on my calculator right now. And what I'm going to do is take that times 4 times pi. And that's going to return an answer of 137.6806. And that number keeps going for a bit. So we want to then pay attention to whatever our rounding instructions ask us to do. So let's say that we were asked to round this one to the tenths place we would give our answer as 137.7 because the following digit is five or larger. That would push our tenths place up to a six. 
units were not provided. So this we would just maybe state as being square units. So it's really important that we only round one time in a problem like this. So I don't want to round off my slant height. I want to keep that long messy decimal on my calculator and bring it over to this step. And then I want to wait and just round one time at the very end of the problem. If you're careful about that, then your decimals will match nicely when you're doing your practice problems in Delta Math.